So I'm going to play for you guys a clip. So my buddy, Chad Masters, who's a part of our integrated um, community, and he's got a great podcast with his wife, Tori, as well. Um, he shot me a, um, a reel. He's, you're listening to this and you're like, man, Jeremy needs to talk about this. Then you can always DM me on Instagram, you know, your, uh, your, your ideas, and they might appear on the podcast. This is uh, one of those. So when Chad sent this to me, he's like, you're probably going to want to think about this one. I'm like, yeah, that, that one does trigger something in me. Let's talk about it. So I will uh, play this for you guys. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. Otherwise, you will uh, be able to hear it, hopefully. Here we go. Recent findings in modern dadhood. This new era of dad has been born. They're no longer just a provider to their families. They are involved in the nurturing roles that were once only associated with mothers. The modern dad isn't just a disciplinarian. He walks through the processes with his children, validates their feelings, encourages them to show emotion, to communicate, and he never shames them. He realizes the importance of quality time. He may work long hours, but he knows when he clocks out of that job, he's fully committed to the other job being a dad he realizes the short time he has before they don't need him in the same way this new okay so i'll play the rest of this but you guys can kind of see where this is this is building up so he's saying here's all this this baggage that we all had so yeah there's a lot of so he's basically describing um the uh the transition that's happening and i think he's accurately describing the transition about our vision of fatherhood is changing um culturally and in this video is highlighting some of those elements. So he hit a few of those, no longer shaming, no longer just the provider, no longer the disciplinarian. Um, and then if you're not watching this, you're basically watching a reel of a guy who's doing lots of what I will uh, say are traditionally motherly things. <laughs> doing motherly things in a contrived setup where the obviously set up with the camera yes, so that he can do it in front of the camera. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. We're seeing He's like doing the dishes and hanging out with his kid and, you know, basically taking him by the hand and just being very, very present. And um, it's just him and his child in a home, you know, basically like his child looks like probably a little young, too young for school. House, no matter the dynamic between partners, there is no competition. There is no set jobs. There is no gender roles. There is only one goal. And that is to create a household that is a positive environment for raising good humans. If I could sum up parenthood with one phrase, it would be, I'm tired, but I'm also the happiest I've ever been. So what did he say? What do you guys remember he said? So there's no gender roles. I don't know if you remember what he said there. It was something like no roles, no gender roles, no assigned uh, jobs. No assigned yeah. jobs. Yes. No yeah. order, <laughs> no boundaries. Yeah. Jeremy, did you? Thriving. Did you... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, did you pin that one comment to be showing on the screen there on purpose? Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't actually see it. <laughs> what does it say there? <laughs> Basically says, had me in the first half and then uh, and then lost me in the second half. Okay. Talking about the feminization of uh, of fatherhood there. Yes. Well, that that's exactly what I want to talk about, which is that I think that people, the church, people, um, people within society would be cheering the first half. And then all of a sudden shocked about the move he makes in the second half. So the first half you're seeing a very present dad who's just like in the home and, you know, and then, then when he says there's no roles, there's no jobs, it, everything's equal, but it's not showing everything equal. It's just showing a dad alone. So I, I don't, I think this is the move that people that I'm getting so frustrated. People are cheering on, right? This is the reason why, you know, in the whole bluey conversation, I've gotten in so much trouble because I, I think people, they don't. They, they they spend the first couple of seasons just like amazed at this present father. And, oh, I love the fact that he's doing all these traditional mother things. And that's so great. And then and then in the next season, when they they show the actual role reversal happening and, and gender being erased and, you know, then they're like, oh, I didn't see that coming. And I'm like, wait, 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 guys, you didn't see that coming. <laughs> like, don't you realize that's the whole point like of this transition? That if that if you untether fatherhood from its its basic, um, you know, its its basic objective design that we 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 are given in scripture, and I, I've written a lot about the the difference between you know Bluey and Abraham um, to try to help people understand. Yeah, there are objective ways of seeing this, and 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 so we what we need is not just a uh, we need a positive, clear vision of fatherhood that shows what that role actually looks like, um, because if you don't do that. The, the, the goal is to move from the playful present father as being the primary way to describe fatherhood to, to that final statement. It's designed to get you to 
There are no gender roles. There is no such thing as fatherhood and motherhood. There's only parenthood. That's what the culture desperately wants to say. Um, that's the kind of conversation I want to have. But I, I thought this reel actually perfectly encapsulated that move that people are so shocked that it's made, just like the commenter, but it's it's inevitable. And it's actually the, the design of the move in general. And I think we're being very susceptible to it. So yeah, Riley, what are your thoughts about this? Yeah, um, I think uh, I think that's absolutely right as far as what the movie is kind of the, the pedalos of the story that's being told with the motherly dad Jenkins, you're hitting the nail on the head. Um, one of the things I noticed when the video was playing was um, the usage of the word just. Uh, he said just provider, just disciplinarian. And I think that mm. comes from the fact that a lot of 90s kids particularly are scarred by fathers that were just providers and just disciplinarians and yes. just the thing, right? Instead of living into a fuller picture and vision of what fatherhood is supposed to look like. Mm. And so people are reacting to that flawed um, picture that they receive as children uh, instead of looking for a fuller picture. And I think that's what you see playing out in that video. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I do think that it's important to acknowledge that um, that kind of, uh, kind of gender or uh, generation impact that's occurred where you have a generation that had a distant father. And so generations tend to be reactions to the previous generation. And this is, this, this reaction gets way more extreme when they're not, when we're not tethered to some kind of objective description of what we're actually aiming at. So if you don't know what fatherhood's supposed to look like, if you don't know why God designed fatherhood, if you don't have divine revelation around the nature of fatherhood, then all you have is a reaction. That's why the primary move of feminism is to to ask women to become like men, because there isn't a there isn't an objective of what it means to be a uh, a female. Um, there's only uh, the the move towards equality, which is we see men having things we want. To make sure that we're not denied those things as well and so the move is in the direction of the reaction instead of towards the ideal we desperately need an ideal and we are living in a culture without an ideal which leaves us to just go to one extreme after the other and the extremes are going to get more extreme and so people you're only allowed to celebrate right now fatherhood that looks like motherhood um, you're not allowed to celebrate fatherhood that looks like fatherhood. And so you, you will see, I, I will guarantee you guys can look around at any depiction of fatherhood. And this is why I've been raising the alarm. Um, and, and you look at that and you're like, well, there's, there's a lot of good in that. I mean, it's great that a, that a father spends more time with their kids. It's great that a father is doing more work in the home. I don't have anything wrong with any of those things. And this is every time I make any of these, uh, anytime we, we address this issue, the immediate reaction is that the assumption that we think that the idea of fatherhood, um, dads being active in, in a home environment is somehow negative or being very present and playful with a child is somehow negative. That's not the, the, the critique. The critique is that that is defining fatherhood. That's the problem. That, that is a huge problem. I have a huge problem with playfulness and presence defining fatherhood. Fatherhood involves those things. Those are elements of fatherhood that are good and you can dial them up and down during different seasons, but that's not what defines fatherhood. Like what, what does this turn up for you? Yeah. A couple of thoughts, maybe as contributors to this that are, this is such a strange problem because I think that maybe this guy, I don't know if this guy knows that he's being a shill of the feminist slash communist movement of disintegrating the home, right? Like we actually, we don't know what he's doing, but I think it's very natural, uh, for us to, I think it's natural in the early stages of fatherhood to actually embrace this as the ideal. And I'll say that I've actually fallen prey to this because at the early stages, there's actually a need for more nurture than there is for, let's say, masculine energy. Um, when you have a bunch of kids under the age of four, you know, like there still is a need for masculine energy. And I'd say specifically boundary setting, discipline, and things like that, maybe as you're getting closer to four. But when you're at like, 12 months and below, there's actually very little training. And in fact, you're almost interchangeable uh, with the exception of the fact that you can't like nurse the child, but like you really just like, who's going to hold the baby. Right. And so I think that what happens is this is actually an instance of the Dunning-Kruger effect where people get really excited about being a father 
And they're like, being a father is amazing. All I do is love and nurture them. And it's like, yeah, because you've only, you've got a nine month old, but what you don't know that's happening is this person's going to individuate and then suddenly start pushing against your values and causing chaos and actually harming your wife. And someone needs to stand in the gap and actually create order in this, right? Um, but they don't know that yet because I think it's the, it, it, there's like, uh, I think the most content is created by the youngest fathers. And because I think the older fathers, one, are maybe less familiar with social media and two, are probably have more important things to do than to create social media posts yes. a lot of times, right? Um, yeah, I want to say maybe to specifically Riley's comment on the the harm of uh, fathers who are maybe just a provider or just X, Y, or Z. I think that that's a little bit exacerbated by therapy culture, um, which is, I think, actually giving us in our 20s, and I'll say giving me in my 20s, essentially I'm feeling confused or whatever else of my general life, and I can point to my dad and not empathize with him because I wasn't, I wasn't a father of teenagers yet. Um, and I can not empathize with him and say, oh, he was just being a provider and whatever else. And now a decade and a half later, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful for that masculine act of being a provider. And so I think there, there's some element of this thing where I think we're actually propagating a story of harm when actually maybe just purely masculine energy was, was enough. And we just don't yet have the perspective that that was enough. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we have to understand that the, the thing that's really weird is that you can be raised in a generation where a father had to do just tremendously difficult things to provide for a family. But if you if the next generation it's easier, then you can resent your father for why weren't you more present? Yeah, I, I didn't I wasn't there. I didn't see, you know, the 60 hour work weeks. I didn't see you bearing with a really tyrannical boss and just deciding not to quit because you were thinking about me and about providing for me. And so that I had food and I had a roof over my head, you know, those are things that once you get to a certain level of affluence, you just discount. And then you're saying, what would be really great is just to be this dad. Who's just, how is that guy making money? Like every time you watch Bluey and the, the dad is not working like that, you, you have to ask like, who is actually providing for this family? And of course you don't know, is it the government? Is it, is it his wife? Um, but so, somebody is actually fathering this family and it's not the dad. And, and so th this is part of what's so confusing about the way our culture talks about this. And if you can provide for your family, and then at that point you choose not to be present, you know, th there could be, uh, injuries, but a lot of times gaps exist within families or out of necessity because we are in a survival mode season. Like we talked a lot, a lot about our kids about, man, you have to be aware of, of um, sometimes you have a need and the families desperately would like to meet the need, but we may not have the ability to meet the need. And this has happened, you know, imagine generations that sent all the fathers off to war, you know, where is my, you know, where's my dad for three or four years while he's literally risking his life to provide for our freedom. And so only for me he to go. He was just absent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just the absent father. Yeah. So the reason matters. Now, I, again, there, there are certainly yes. examples of mm. Of fathers that are neglecting their families for absolutely selfish reasons. Um, but I think that we have to get into the details and you can be just as injured by an absent father who's gone off to war as you are by a father who leaves the family because you, you know, when you're three, what, how do you know the difference? You're still being potentially right. injured by the lack of presence of a, of a male figure in your life. But I think that, you know, what part of what it means to be, become an adult is to look back on those experiences and actually try to understand what happened and why and have some grace for for your family and the situation you were in especially like i think that it's critical to think about the kind of father your father had um and i i do have a lot less patience for men who have great fathers who really set them up well and then really drop the ball with regards to their children yeah um I, that really bothers me man there are a lot of situations where an abusive father um uh, was, um, a, you know, a man coming from a, a family with an abusive father becomes a much, much better father. Um, and that, that, that there's a generational, um, improvement that's occurring that, that now, instead of, um, complaining about the problems that your dad brought into your life, what you need to be thinking about is how are you going to be even a better father for your children? Like that. And, and again, in, the word better means that somehow we can agree on what the ideal father looks like. No one's ever going to be the ideal father. But because we don't know that, 
this Instagram reel literally defined it for us. It told us this is the ideal father. And, and so who cares if you work? Of course, money and provision is going to come from somewhere, anywhere. Um, but you need to be, be present for that three-year-old. And Blake, I love what you said about the, um, I think a big part of what I was writing in, in the articles about Abraham was that when you think about a father, you have to think about the head of, a, of an actual family, which could include adult children, a much larger number of children, a much larger number of people in the household. Abraham, even though he had only had you know, two sons, he had 318 trained men in his household. It was a very complex organization he was running. And so part of what you're thinking about is what, what this looks like when you have, like, I have adult children and grandchildren. So it's like you have the situation where you're, you're having to manage a lot more than a three-year-old. And I, I agree, the Dunning-Kruger effect, which basically says the person with the least amount of information is going to be the most bold about what they believe because they don't actually know anything. So they don't know the counter arguments to what they're describing. And I completely agree that's what's happening in this video.